good morning from Lake Buena Vista, Florida. I'm here at the entrance of Disney's Hollywood Studios at the new Skyliner station, which is now open. So a lot has changed here, guys. So the Skyliner, it connects Epcot with the Riviera Resort, Caribbean Beach Resort, Hollywood Studios, of course, and Art of Animation and the Pop Century Resort. And I really can't wait to fly back out to Florida to be able to check this thing out really soon. What I love best about the Skyliner is it connects to my favorite park, Epcot. So the Skyliner will drop you off right over here down at the International Gateway over by France, which, by the way, the new Ratatouille ride should be ready by hopefully next year. Well, I know we started our adventure at Disney's Hollywood Studios, but what we really came for is Epcot, because today we're going to take a point of view tour of living with the land. Are you ready? Let's go. And as we head on over to the land, this crystal clear pond is currently drained. And I always wondered, how do they keep it so crystal clear? Because here in Florida, as you probably know, algae grows very, very fast. And as you can see, the algae has already started to grow. But uh, I always wonder, what do they add in here? What do they do to keep it so crystal clear clean? There's a lot of coins in here, and what's really neat is these coins are gathered up and donated to the local charities. I'm always amazed by all of the horticulture, topiaries, and other plants that are here. So here we are at the land. Let's head inside. Look at that line. I'm sure glad we have a fast pass today for that. systems of our planet. In the desert, nature has created a very different but no less beautiful living system. And what Welcome to our living laboratory, where scientists from Epcot and the U.S. Department of Agriculture are exploring innovative ways to produce bountiful harvests now and into the future. The tropics are home to the greatest diversity of plants on the planet. Many of these, like papaya, bananas, cacao, coffee and rice, are well known around the world. These are just a few of the edible plants that have been an important source of nutrition for people living in the tropics. Many are rich in vitamins and minerals, while others are well adapted to growing in less than ideal conditions. Some, like the water lily, thrive in wet, swampy areas and waterways. All parts of this plant, even the flower petals, are edible. The starchy root of the plant has long been used to make flour for baking. Hold on, 
One day, many of these lesser-known tropical plants may be as important as the bananas growing on both sides of the boat. More than 28 million tons of bananas are eaten annually, making it the most popular fruit in the world. While there are more than 50,000 edible plant species, and most of us are only familiar with the handful that make up our everyday diet. The common grains growing here, wheat, maize, sorghum, and millet, plus rice, account for nearly two-thirds of our global food consumption. Learning how to increase yields of these staples is an important goal of research around the world. These plants are definitely on their way up. Innovative growing techniques like these increase yields while more efficiently using resources like water, fertilizer, and pesticides. Another innovation at work here is our integrated pest management program. By populating our greenhouses with beneficial insects that prey on harmful pests like aphids and flies, we are significantly reducing our reliance on conventional pesticides. We're growing these crops using our nutrient film system. This technique precisely controls and recycles water and nutrients. With it, we can produce over 27,000 heads of lettuce a year in this one small area. Some of our best ideas have been inspired by nature, like these fruit and vegetable trees. By growing these ground plants vertically, we can increase yields and better control diseases. These crops taste as good as they look. In fact, we serve more than 15 tons of produce from our greenhouses and restaurants here at the land every year. agriculture may include innovative ideas like this vertical growing system. Plants grown in this way use a fraction of the space required by traditional growing methods. That saves water and increases production. The aquaponic system on your left 
combines hydroponics with aquaculture. The fish provide a natural source of fertilizer for the plants, and the plants help keep the water clean for the fish. It's another great way to produce more while using less. In our lab, Epcot scientists are working with the U.S. Department of Agriculture on a number of innovative projects. The goal of these efforts is to produce higher yielding and better quality plants. represent just a fraction of the work being done worldwide to produce bountiful harvests for our growing population. Scientists, farmers, and even backyard gardeners are doing their part to improve the quantity and quality of foods that we all rely upon. Together, we can continue to find more ways to increase food production and protect our precious natural environment. Only then, Will we truly be living with the land?